Okay guys, I just want to do a really quick video here to look at a game that I played yesterday that involved the use of um, a Tetsuji towards the end of the game, towards to the very, very uh, quite far in. Um, often when we do Sumigo, when we do Go problems, we kind of go, well, what's the point of this? This never happens in my games. This never appears on the board. And I just want to point out that that's not the case. And the reason we do um, uh, go problem practice, assume you go practice, whether on Black to Play or Badook Pop or GoProblems.com, is because actually these things really do happen on the board. So this is the game. It's uh, I'm black against a white opponent. My opponent's three stones stronger than me, um, so they were about three or four k. And largely from the at the start of the game, they just gave me a real kicking. So this is the opening sequence of the game, the opening fight here. And what we can see here is although black has separated this white group here, white has captured pretty much the entire right side. And if we go on a few moves here, um, what we can see is now that this black group is dead with only one eye, and white has got all of this corner. And white this black group's thin, this black group is not yet alive, the one in the center, but there's a fight on with this white group here that's also not alive. So the game continues and now white has captured the upper right corner. And so with this black group dead, all of this side is now being belonging to white. Um, black struggling with this group to try and link this group here on the P16 line out to the L group or and try and make some territory on the top side. So this is go. Then white invades uh, the corner. Uh, it was great play. And this goes on in the center. Um, white. Actually, I exchange, and, and I'm just going to go back and show you this. This is, we've talked about this Joseki long lots of times. Um, at this point, after the white invasion on the 3-3, three, three, black has a choice. Black can, after white harney, black can double harney, and in double harney, you're giving up the outside in order to get the points in the corner. Because of black shape here, I thought I wanted those points in the corner. So white, white Atari's, black connects. White Atari's, black counter Atari's, white takes, and black takes the corner, and white comes out. So black's got a big territory, and white pushes in on that side. The fight carries on. I'm not going to go through the detail of the fight. I will post the uh, the SGF if you want, guys. If you guys actually want to look at the game on this one. Um, so this is the game. So now white's got all of this side, and actually black's pretty secure on the top side. Um, and then white invades the lower right, lower left corner. Game goes like, and white lives. So white just cheerfully carves out the lower right corner. Uh, sorry, lower left corner. This one's gone now. And so now white's got all of this side, that corner, living group here, the center strong. This black group in the center is looking increasingly weak. It's probably can make two eyes in there, but not much more. And black's but a bit. So the game is now poised. Um, and the game continues. So white, just to knock me out of the game completely, invaded the top side. This didn't work, and I had to read very carefully. Again, I'm not going to go through the detail of this fight, but I was able, <coughs> through um, a couple of moves, and here we are. That's the move. Now, this white group has only got one eye. This eye here at J18 is a false eye, and so there's only one eye at G 19 because when that black stone dies so the white groups died on top um, so black's got the top territory and that's counterbalanced by white's got the right territory and then white's got these living groups here and here and here so uh, again the game is uh, i think it's marginally it's, it's about even it might be marginally white it depends whether this black group here survives so then i but i saw a sequence here and I'm just going to pause the video here for a moment and say, can you see any kind of sequence for black that might shift this game? Okay, that's the pause done with. Um, 
Okay, I'd seen a sequence at this point. So white played here, but I needed a center to trigger it. So I connected there, and then white played here, and here comes the sequence. So the the sequence starts with this Atari here at 012. So if white lets these stones die, then the black group on the right hand side will come alive, and um, black will win the game. But when white connects, black gets this force. So this is another Atari. This is what we call the uh, the diagonal Tesuji, where this this eye, the space is caught on either side. So white must connect, and then black pushes in. And black Ataris, white sorry, white Ataris black here, and black must connect, otherwise it loses the two stones and everything connected. Remember, if this white group lives this black group dies and the game is over completely because this the center will be destroyed so black plays here now white cannot has to connect here if black connects there at the h13 point then all of these white stones here will die they'll run out of uh, liberties they'll only have two liberties and this black group here has got three outside liberties plus an eye which means that white must connect there and white does, which means black can play a co. So now black has connected this group, the group on the, the K11 group, with the G, the FG12 group by a co. So white Atari is here, and black must resist. Black cannot actually uh, ignore that and connect here because then white will play here and if black does this eye stealing Tetsuji white makes the second eye here so that simply doesn't work and if after white takes here black plays here to remove this eye white makes the eye here and if this white group lives then the black stones on the right hand side die so actually after that threat um, black had to answer and white takes the co and connects all of its stones back together again through the co. So all of these white stones here connect out to the liberties and this wall down here and black in the centre start to look fragile again. So I play this as a co-threat. What's this co-threat saying? It's saying if you don't <coughs> excuse me, if you don't answer right now, black would descend at R18 kill the three stones and actually then there's a there's a fight between the two groups in the corner <coughs> so white answered but for me that was a double co-threat i still get one shot another shot at the cherry because i can descend again at r18 and i take back the co white takes this makes this move uh, white played that co-threat and I answered that co-threat there so white took back the co so I descended against again here and white took that and then I took back the co and then white played this and this wasn't a good enough co-threat it simply wasn't a good enough co-threat because white's threatening to take that stone but I figure that I can still connect the black wall on right, the right side and the black wall on the left without that so I ignored the co-threat and connected so the white group in the center is now cut and white took the, that but then black played here this is why this was mistaken co-threat by my opponent because now a black move here actually not only kills the two white stones here but makes two eyes for black so white set to work on the outside let's just count liberties the white group here in the center has now got one at j14 two at k14 and three liberties this group has actually got two outside liberties plus an eye, but watch what happens. White presses in. So I prevent white from making an eye. I don't want white to play at J15 and make an eye for its group. So I block there and Atari the stone. And white throws in on the right hand side and threatening to kill 
the L, the L part of this group and chuck the whole group in two and then everything comes alive again. So I have to take the stone and then white plays here. And this is where we have to count liberties. Let's just count liberties. White has got one liberty here at N10, another liberty here at K14 and a third liberty at J14. Black has got one liberty here at S10 and one liberty here at S12. So white has got three liberties and black has got two liberties. And that tells us that white's going to win the fight. White's a liberty ahead in this semi. But black had a Tesuji. And this is why Tesujis are so beautiful and so important. What black does is play this Tesuji. And now that's a forlorn stone. We know that stone is going to be killed. But what's the impact of that stone on the game? The impact of that stone on the game is that white can no longer play at S10. And white can't play at S12 because it's an eye liberty. You have to play the eye, eyes last when you're in a capturing race. But white can no longer play at S10 without a self Atari and the black stone I've just played on S8 has got two liberties which means white will have to play two stones in order to remove that stone from the board and until that stone is no longer on the board it cannot play S10 so let's just count liberties again so white has got one two three liberties inside its group black has got one two liberties here but white has got to play two stones. So we had two to two. Black has now got the equivalent of four liberties. Magic out of nowhere. They've just appeared on the board. Two extra liberties. So now in that liberty race, it's four liberties to black and three to white. Black's going to win. And after that, Tesuji, white realized to its horror what's just happened in the game. It played the move. So now this stone is in Atari. It will take white one more move to remove that stone but notice while it exists on the board while it's still there white cannot play s10 white cannot cannot make that move because of um self atari so i take a liberty out here so white's now down to two liberties and again let's just notice this that white cannot do this because of this and then black gains its gains two eyes and white is still dead so white must remove the black stone in order to be able to play S10. And at that point, white realizes to its horror what's happened in this game and actually abandons and tries to fight out and attack this black group here by playing this move here. I'm pretty secure. I've got a bamboo joint here and I'm connected and these white stones are about to die. The death of these white stones in the center means my black group on the right hand side comes to life and it looks like this white group in the center uh, is barely alive with eyes. So I ignore that and simply take to reduce white down so that there's no further threat from this Tesuji. So now white is an Atari in the center. White plays here and I simply protect the cutting point at D5 and white resigns. That was the end of the game. I just wanted to do that just to illustrate to you the beauty of a simple, really, really simple Tesuji. That that fight was, was fought and won because of the power of that stone there. That's what happened. That stone by existing on the board, by existing with two liberties meant that white had to spend two moves to remove it before it would be able to play S10 and kill the black group. And out of such elegant beauty, that's the game of Go. Okay, guys, see you soon. Bye for now.